Welcome, welcome back. Hi, I'm Tracy, and this week you find me in the kitchen in my home here in Sussex, England. Now, I've had a very busy week restyling this space. In the spring, I went with lots of pops of pink in amongst all my rustic styling. Now we're moving into midsummer. I thought it would be nice to give it a complete refresh and go with lots of whites and greens. So, come see what I've been up to. I've got two chandeliers in the kitchen and I've been dying to decorate these for some time, but I never quite worked out what to use. Then when my son was in America a few months ago, I sent him into Hobby Lobby and they had four of these garlands. So he brought them all back to the UK for me. And I've been decorating very happily with them ever since. Now you may have seen these in my last few videos, the cottage summer decorating and the chair makeover. Now I've got one in the kitchen already, but I think if I use them in the chandeliers, this one might be overkill having three in there. So I'll take this one down and also I'm going to take the one down that I'm using on the mantle in the snug. The snug, if you've not seen any previous videos, is a room just off the kitchen that we use for relaxing. And I've just got to say, my American friends, you are so lucky having a place like Hobby Lobby. We've got absolutely nothing like that in the UK. And also from the UK, we can't shop in Hobby Lobby. We can't access the website. So if anybody knows how I can get hold of more garlands like this, please, please let me know. Well, I'm delighted with the way the chandeliers have turned out. So now we're going to move on to a dresser or hutch, as you would call it in America. This is Mahogany Mo, or Big Mo, as we affectionately call her. She was found at the back of the auction house, all dirty and broken and dusty and only £80. So I gave her a huge makeover and now she lives very happily in the kitchen. I want to use some of these pots on her, but they're just too grey. I tried whitening one of them and it just really didn't work at all. So I'm actually going to use some of my filler technique. Now you may have seen a video on this, please do check it out if you're interested. So it's wall filler mixed with soil and my new secret ingredient is just such an awesome colour. And when you dab it into the wet mix, it creates such a beautiful effect when you're doing faux stone. These pieces here were originally silver, really super shiny Christmas ornaments, which I rapidly went off. And I've used this effect on them and it's completely transformed them. Really pleased. If you love anything like that, do check out the video that I've got on it. I've got a collection of lead crystal decanters that I actually found at auction that were in amongst a large job lot of glassware. And if memory serves me, I think I only paid about £30 for the whole lot. I'm really loving them on here. I love them against the white, next to the stone, and then in front of the, the gorgeous vintage mirror, which is mottled and it's discoloured. And I love that. It just adds to that whole overall effect. I'm keeping everything here feeling very clean, very bright, very fresh, because after all, it is summer styling, but it does need something just to anchor it. So I'm going to bring in a big pop of green and I don't need to spend any money, just clippings from the garden. Time for some table styling now. I've tried different runners down the middle of this table and 
every time I keep coming back to this hessian. I couldn't get one long enough so I've got two pieces and I just overlay them in the middle. I'm using some sizal table mats that I bought from John Lewis many years ago and on top of those these are actually plant stands so I'm going to place these but I'm using them as candlesticks. Again, I bought them from auction, put a paint effect on, but they're really quite wide at the top. So even one of these huge chunky Ikea candles is not enough. So I'm adding three. Now I want something quite bold for the middle. So I'm gonna pop outside and see if there's a suitable hydrangea pot that I can bring in. These are all at various ages, various stages of growth, but predominantly pink and white. Now this one in the basket looks as though it's gonna be suitable. So we'll take that one in and use that as freestyling. I'll keep it inside for a few weeks and then it can come back out. Now obviously it's going to have a leaky bottom and I've got to keep on watering it so I'm going to put a deep dish down first so that will catch the water. We're moving on to the big old pine dresser now, or hutch. Now this lamp is just not cutting it for me for summer. In fact, it's been catching my eye for a while. So I'm gonna use this opportunity to take that and the vase out. And I'm gonna give those a makeover. I've given the top shelf a little bit of a reshuffle. The big bust on the left has come in and the pot that was in the middle has gone onto the plinth that the big bust was on. Now I do need something quite tall in that corner there because it's white walls and there's a gap between the end of the dresser, but you know, that is not gonna work. Oh, come on girl, move that one out the way. Let's try something else. Now this one's going to be much more appropriate. It's got the height. It's actually terracotta, but I've done a stone effect on it to line it up. I want to put the pampas grass in, but the stems are just too short. They're going to fall all the way through. So a vessel within a vessel just happens to be a cut glass vase, but it fits perfectly. In go the stems. Ah, looks a little bit unsightly. So I'm going to cover it up with a piece of hessian. And no, I'm not going to cut off the dangly bits. I quite like them. It just adds to that whole rustic vibe. Now the dresser itself is really quite old and we actually got it from our last house, which was a manor house. Uh, it was left by the previous owners. They were moving on to another property that was much smaller. So we kept it and I just adore it. And I think now it's going to become a bit of a family heirloom. It's not leaving us. The white candelabras were originally glass and silver and I covered them all with white chalk paint and popped in some beige sand and fog candles. The little faux cosmos here are from a much bigger bouquet that the children got me for last Mother's Day. Now to fill the big pot. Again, I want to make a big statement. I want a summer statement. And what is better than Annabelle Hydrangea, those big bouncy girls, and also some gypsophila. I've had somewhat mixed results with the cut flower bed this year. In fact, it's my first time doing one. I'm still on a learning curve, but the gypsophila has been prolific, so I've actually planted some more behind this. So we'll be taking some bundles of that in. Now, I have had much more success with hydrangea cuttings. These were taken just last year, and they're already flowering. I've got some great height on them and I'm going to do some more towards the end of this month. I think it's a little bit too early at the moment. So I will let you know how I get on with those. I'm also going to try doing some cuttings of the Annabelle as well. They are just so stunning. They are absolute divas, but they look fabulous. Now, as this stone pot has such a wide opening, a wide neck, I am going to use a vessel within a vessel. I'll put my water in first 
and then start to add them, obviously making sure that I get them inside the glass and not outside. But the heads on these, they are just absolutely stunning. So I think a big pot of these will create that beautiful big pop of white and green. I'm not going to cut too many though because I want to make sure that I've got plenty left for drying at the end of the season. It's quite an art timing them. You've got to find them just when they're starting to feel waxy but before they start to turn brown and then I cut them, take off all the leaves, stand them in probably about an inch of water and just let them dry out naturally. I'll then use them in my wreath styling and generally in my Christmas styling as well. On to the island now. This island actually is a big old engineer's workbench. It's about eight foot long and I found it at Ardingly Antiques Fair. It was in a field. I was chatting away to a friend. My eyes lifted. I saw it. I fell in love. I was having it regardless of what price I could negotiate for it. Fortunately, the dealer wasn't asking silly money for it. So the deal was done. It came back here and it was before the renovation. So I designed the whole kitchen around the bench. Best decision I ever made. The bowl here at this end of the countertop was made by my daughter when she was just 16 and the tray came in my recent auction haul. It had a Carltonware tea set on it so I've given that tray a bit of a makeover. The same as the mirror. Now there is a video that shows me doing all of this so do check that out. The wreath here I made just from a base. I wrapped a couple of garlands around, added some of the faux flowers that the children had bought me and tied on bits of string just for that rustic effect. The big pot here was originally a home sense TK Maxx find and again terracotta and I used some of the filler just very very loosely wiping it on. Again, it's got a wide neck, so it's a vessel within a vessel and then adding the gypsy filler. Sadly, there's no blue skies to show you out of the window here. It's gone very dark and I think rain is imminent. I'm adding some more gypsy filler to another pot that's had the same filler technique applied to it. I'm popping that in front of the other window, the other side of the range on the countertops. I am going to cut some more of the gypsy filler and then I'm going to put it into bundles, tie it with string, hang it in the garage which is cool and dark and then I'll be able to let that dry out and use it in decorations, particularly as I get towards Christmas, I do like to use gypsy filler. Anyone else styling for the summer and thinking about Christmas? It does feel a bit naughty, doesn't it? Ah, oh, here is the rain. 
as expected. Never mind, I've got all my clippings out of the garden, so I'm just going to add those to some jugs and then add some faux flowers to them. Now the arrangement in this basket on top of the fridge freezer keeps catching my eye. If you saw my spring decorating of the kitchen, you'll have seen me do this. I've since added some gypsy filler and allowed it to dry. But you know, sometimes in styling, it's about what you take away as opposed to what you add. And I think we've got enough green in the kitchen. So I'm gonna leave this basket just as it is with the pine cones, but I am moving this arrangement over just to balance everything out. And just as I finish, the rain stops and the evening sun comes out. So that's my kitchen summer styling. I do hope that's given you lots of inspiration for your own home. Remember, you don't have to spend a lot of money to create a beautiful space for you to live in. You can just move objects around your own home. You can revamp them if you don't like them anymore. You can shop from your garden. You can shop from nature. You can go out and pick a handful of weeds and put it in a jam jar, put it in the middle of the table, and it's gonna look lovely. If you'd like more summer decorating inspiration, then please do check out my other videos. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to welcoming you back here next week. Take care.